Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your post-race edition for the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix. Qualifying and race all in one day. Could get used to that. Very exciting. Ferrari locks out the front row. Sebastian Vessel with a blistering lap. They found the speed from Friday, cranked it all up and took Mercedes by surprise. But in the race itself, it all fell apart. So uh, it wasn't the victory that many were expecting. Sebastian Vessel investigated for a jump start. It looked pretty black and white, but ultimately he didn't get a penalty for it. However, he did lose that P1 going down into turn one. Valtteri Bottas took the lead and pretty much controlled the race from there. Behind those, Charles Leclerc, contact with Max Verstappen. And he's had to go to the stewards after the race to explain his actions. Verstappen would eventually retire from the race. Mercedes couldn't quite turn the result into a 1-2, bringing it home with a 1-3. Vettel doing everything right, as I'm about to get run over by a McLaren, um, to hold off Lewis in the closing laps of what was to be a two-stop race. Critically, Lewis Hamilton got the fastest lap of the day, and for that extra point, confirms Mercedes as now six time Formula One world champion, six times on the bounce. And perhaps more importantly than that, if it could be more importantly than that, the fact that the drivers finished where they did means that only now Lewis Hamilton or Valtteri Bottas can be crowned drivers world champion in 2019, meaning that Mercedes have done the double six times in a row. First time in Formula One history, an incredible achievement. Here's your top three. Valtteri Bottas, your race winner. Sebastian Vettel came home second. Lewis Hamilton in third. Feels good. Yeah, I'm very, very happy and missed that definitely. Um, just really, really a perfect day with a, with, a, with a perfect start. Obviously, we knew coming into the race that we will have a good race pace like we've seen every Sunday before, even though Ferrari has beaten us in, in the qualifying. So, yeah, I'm glad we managed to get to the lead because it is so different when you're at the lead and you can really con control the pace and, you know, manage the tyres and everything. So. I enjoyed it today, I've uh, been missing that, so I want more of these. I know it hasn't always worked out for you this season, but today it, it did. There was a point during the race when you got on the radio and asked you know, about the strategy. How were you feeling at that point? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't just quite sure if Lewis is still going to stop or not, but uh, he was on the medium tyre, so I think there was no way to get to the end with that tyre. So, um, yeah, just I had some concerns regarding that, but uh, yeah, for me, strategy today was really good so I'm happy with that. Obviously I had a poor start so uh, I think uh, yeah I had a bit of a uh, I think I was a little bit early with the clutch initially then clutched in again and obviously then lost quite a bit of momentum so not uh, not a great start. Um, usually the starts are very good but today obviously it wasn't but um, yeah after that I think it was a tough race we stayed second until the end which is a good effort. Um, but yeah, missing missing out a little bit in terms of uh, speed in the race compared to Mox. Why do you think that was? Because in qualifying you obviously yeah. look so strong and I appreciate well, it's a different. the first time we see that in qualifying we are, you know, there even a little bit faster. But today, to be honest, I think we went to the, through the tyres more than them. Especially at the end of the stints we were falling off more, whereas they kept, you know, the pace throughout. So, uh, um, yeah, it was difficult. Obviously with Lewis, the only target at the end was to really stay ahead of him. I knew that down the straights he would struggle to, to overtake um, because we are a bit faster. So I just tried to have clean exits in the places where it mattered and the rest, uh, I knew that he can't just, you know, drive on top of me or through me. So Is this a great result for the team to have the one too? So super, super happy for everyone. It's, just, it's been a long, long year and um, very, very much well deserved. Congratulations on the Constructors Championship. Uh, what does it mean to you and the rest of the team to have done it six times now in a row? Um, it just shows shows the uh, the strength and depth through and through uh, for the team. Um, you know, incredibly proud to be a part of it, to be a part of Mercedes history, and to equal Ferrari. Um, it's it's quite something. So now we have to work on trying to eclipse the Ferrari. Good to hear from the top three. Now, Max Verstappen, as we've already said, retired from the race. But his teammate, Alex Albon, had a much better day. Of course, still getting to grip, still learning uh, the team, the car. Had a brilliant qualifying performance, which actually saw him post an identical time to Max Verstappen. No mean feat ever, let alone around a track on which Albon had never raced. In the race, great effort. Uh, P4 for him at the chequered flag. Um, a rich reward finally coming in and had Vettel got 
a penalty for the jump start might even have been a podium for him. Great day for Alex Albon. I feel like I um, had a bad start, let the two McLarens pass me and uh, yeah, <laughs> actually so I went a bit tight with Lando and got passed and then with Carlos just can, didn't have that extra juice to, to overtake um, in the tyres. So uh, yeah, that was that was kind of the first stint and then we were, got passed on the pit stops um, and then from then on it was just kind of managing the tyres and in no man's land really, we were quite far away from the top three, which I want to be closer to, um, but overall not bad. Do you think this was your best race since you've joined Red Bull? Because it seemed like a, like a solid weekend overall for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, I'm, I'm happy with how it's going. I feel a lot more comfortable this weekend than I have been in the previous four races. So the steps are coming there in, in the right way. And uh, yeah, we'll see for Mexico. Another very promising, very impressive weekend for McLaren. Both drivers easily in the top 10 in qualifying and the race started off brilliantly for both of them. Carlos Sainz having a little fight with Lewis Hamilton down through the first few corners. Could have been third, fourth uh, after those first few turns. Don't think they want us looking at the cars. Um, Lando though got debris in his brake ducts. I think it's actually set the thing on fire um, and he had to come in had a bit of a fun moment with Alex Albon down at the uh, at the chicane as well he had a horrible day finished out of the points really really tough one for Lando coming back from that but for Carlos excellent day another excellent day p5 at the checkered flag for him uh, and much to be happy about honestly this has been a, a perfect day you know uh, qualifying lab was clean uh, the start was clean and then the race I managed to extend the first team a lot and that gave me the opportunity to be strong at the end of the race with a medium tire and um, when Albon and Leclerc pitted, one in front and one behind uh, me, to manage to hold to their pace was probably the nicest surprise of, uh, of the year. Nicest surprise for the team, you know, to manage to, to have that space and to manage to, to match the pace of Leclerc and Albon for those laps was uh, very special. If Sebastian Vettel was lucky to hang on to his second place and not get a penalty for the jump start, Charles Leclerc, uh, well... Was he lucky, unlucky? He didn't have his finest hour, let's put it that way. Um, turn to the move with Verstappen. Verstappen obviously not very happy about that. And Charles continued to run then with damage to his car. Ultimately, the end plate scraping along the forward, kicking up sparks and then falling off along with his wing mirror too. Uh, and very nearly hitting Lewis Hamilton. Uh, who was following behind the debris actually collecting in Lando Norris's uh, brakes uh, and setting them on fire. So uh, not a great day uh, for Charles Leclerc. At the chequered flag, he was sixth. The start, uh, yeah, we, we all seen what happened. I understood and we had a contact with Max. It ruined him, his race. It put me quite a lot on the back foot with mine and, uh, and then I tried to push as much as possible to the end but obviously we always knew that it would be compromised with what happened at the beginning so uh, six today I had fun after this uh, with a lot of overtakes but uh, yeah six is a bit disappointing. Uh, was there anything you could have done differently or did you just understand that that's what kind of pushed you into Max at the start? Well, I don't know sometimes it, it happens so uh, yeah, whenever you go back, you always uh, you you never want to crash. I'm pretty sure Max don't want to crash, and and I don't want either. So uh, yeah, but it's uh, it happened like well, it went that way today. Not the best start to the day for Renault. Um, Daniel Ricciardo was out in Q1. Suspension issues. Nico Hulkenberg was out in Q2 with hydraulics issues. But. A much better race. Daniel Ricciardo flew up to P7. Nico Hulkenberg came home P10. So what had looked to be a horrible day, after in practice they were way down the order, like 17th and 18th, uh, all came good, all turned around. Very happy boys at the end of a very good race. It was an entertaining race. Uh, it was busy, fighting a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, but being, being in traffic for uh, most of the second stint, it was a bit of a struggle there. But... Uh, all in all, I think very good. Yeah, after a very difficult morning and qualifying with, with all sorts of problems, uh, very nice recovery. Very happy that we we can reward ourselves with a with a double point finish. Um, personally, had a really good start, an amazing first lap. I think I went from 15 to 10 or something. So that was that was enjoyable. And then uh, no, it was good. I'm I'm pleased. Any kind of particular reason why you think you guys were slow in qualifying and the pace came back to you in the race? 
Uh, I think obviously we, we both didn't get to see our full potential. Uh, we both had technical problems that, that held us back and, and held the pace back. So that was part of it. Um, but we see that sometimes that we that we are stronger in race than, than quality. Uh, I felt like something was, was not right this morning. And uh, yeah, we, we figured uh, after, well, actually during, but then after was came, uh, we, we verified we had a problem with the rear suspension. So um, it was frustrating, frustrating. And um, obviously that wasn't in the end our true pace, but uh, still, you know, I knew we'd have a bit more pace in the race, but to come up to seventh, I think we, uh, we didn't really expect to get, get that far up. So um, I'm really happy, you know, to, to finally get back in the points and, and have a race which was a bit you know a bit trouble free for us um, going long on the medium really really helped us out at the end to push on the soft I thought we were going too long on the medium because I was starting to lose a lot of temperature in the front and uh, I felt like my last few laps were, were a bit too slow but the team said we were still on, on target and uh, yeah so we um, yeah I listened to them basically and, and then we had a, a good chance to attack at the end you certainly had your overtaking boots on did you kind of feel the car was completely different after you made that change or you found that error yeah, absolutely. I mean, this morning it was, um, obviously we didn't have many laps to get into it, but uh, let's say the two laps I did, it, it really didn't feel didn't feel right. Obviously it was a lot windier today, but I, I still felt something wasn't, wasn't quite there. Um, so then I, I put these boots on and uh, actually they weren't made for walking, they were made for overtaking. So these boots are made for over, overtaking they'll do. One of these days these boots are gonna overtake. You. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. That was pretty good actually, it, it fit in well. Bit of a home race for these guys, Honda engines and all that. Also for Pierre Gasly because he spent some time out here racing in Super Formula, loves the track, Japanese fans love him. Um, and it really showed today, launched it into Q3, top job, had a brilliant race, came home P8. So uh, yeah, you're going to see from the big smile on his face, Pierre Gasly's had a great day. I must say it was a pretty good day because starting with the qualifying we didn't expect to make it to Q3 um, so qualify, qualified ninth was, uh, was better than we expected. In the race we, we knew it would be more difficult um, and yeah it was uh, yeah, with the guys behind pushing really hard and I think a bit faster than us so it was quite hard work to, to keep everyone behind. And uh, yeah, I think we're running sevens at some point, eights, um, always around these places. And uh, yeah, to finish with uh, in eighth position in front of all the, the Japanese fans um, for Honda is, uh, is really good. Yeah. Generally, the pace of the Toro Rosso looked pretty competitive against the midfield. Have you made any changes or do you think it was just the circuit that suited you guys? To be fair, I think was we didn't really make any changes compared to last week. Just seemed to um, work a bit more. I think it was kind of a strange weekend as well for everyone with not uh, much work to do on, on Saturday. So you need to go a bit more uh, like blind into qualifying in terms of setup and what you do uh, in the car. And for us, I think it's, it seemed to have worked quite well. So uh, Honda pushed it quite hard as well. And uh, yeah, it's always nice when you feel the, the horsepower. And uh, yeah, today it paid off. Yeah. Now here's an odd one. When the flag went, well, actually, that is why this is an odd one. When he came to talk to us, Lance Stroll thought he was 10th. He's not. Because for some reason on the lighting panel, the chequered flag was shown on lap 52 instead of on lap 53. Therefore, theoretically bringing the race to a halt one lap early because luckily, if you're Sergio Perez, not if you're Lance Stroll, if you're Sergio Perez, that's quite fortunate because he had a little moment with Pierre Gasly going down through turn one, two on the last lap they made contact Perez buffed it off wasn't classified which put Lance up into P10 but because the race actually finished on lap 52 instead of lap 53 actually Checo keeps P9 and Lance finishes P11 so guess what you're about to hear from Lance it doesn't really matter because he didn't get the point but Checo didn't come to talk to us and even if he had it, he would have been talking about the fact he crashed out but he's got points so I don't really know why we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with tyres at the end of the race. Um, that was the main issue. Uh, I was doing, uh, yeah, I did the whole race like one second behind Gasly, and um, my tyres really died at the end, both front and rear. So, um, yeah, the guys on the two stop were, were much quicker. That was definitely a better strategy today. Um, looking back at the race, Perez and Ricciardo uh, at the end were flying through the field. and. Um, 
yeah, a bit of a shame to be running seventh or eighth or whatever we were and to just uh, lose those positions and finish tenth. But it was really uh, difficult the last ten laps with the tyres, so uh, I'm glad we even managed to score a point. Not a great day for Alfa Romeo, lacking the speed that they had shown in that midfield battle for so much of the season. Uh, real head scratcher for them all. P14 for Kimi Raikkonen, P16 for Antonio Giovinazzi. And uh, yeah, not looking good. Yeah, boring day, that's for sure. I mean, um, I, 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 don't, I don't know why, but uh, like the first two stints, we just had no front end in the car, and not really grip at all. And once we swapped to the the soft tyres, actually the car was pretty nice and I think the, I went like three, three, four seconds faster or something. So, you know, it's very confusing, but uh, yeah, let's so we can figure it out. We, we run two cars on a different uh, different aero package this week and uh, let's hope we figure out what's, what is what and uh, get back to where we should be uh, fighting for the points. The interesting case of Haas. Once again, Roman Grosjean, brilliant in qualifying, put it in the top 10. P10 all the way through, Q1, Q2, Q3. Cracking. But in the race, the car disappears. Pace just goes. Um, really, really difficult day for the team. Uh, P15, P17, I think it was at the flag for them. Yeah, it was. Grosjean 15, K Mag P17. Um, still, the headaches exist. Still, answers to be found. Not as good as we wanted. Uh, Start was terrible, don't know why, uh, but it was behind Kev at turn one, so shows how bad it was. And then, uh, then yeah, from that it's very difficult to recover. We, we tried to push hard, we, uh, we fitted the, the hard at the stop to do the one stop race here. Honestly, I had two really good overtakes on Russell and Giovanazzi outside of turn one, two, both times. So that was the highlight of my race. After that, yeah, it was managing tyres, but we just didn't have the pace in the race, a bit of a shame. But how are we going to work and, and see? which next race can be good for us. At least you kind of got to the checkered flag after what happened in Russia. Did you think you've learned a lot about the race pace of the car today? Unfortunately, it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a mirror from Friday, where our race pace was not so good. I think we over delivered in quality, which we tend to, to do most of the time, but then in a race harder. So yeah, we will work on everything. We will try to come back stronger and uh, looking forward to next year. Tough weekend for Williams, uh, Robert Kubica. Big shunt in qualifying, massive rebuilds for the team, but they worked like Trojan. Uh, just phenomenal job, phenomenal job to get the car rebuilt in the shortened, very truncated amount of time between qualifying and the race, it was all in one day. Um, yeah, just Herculean effort from uh, many more Greek mythological references do I want to get in here. Um, huge job from the boys to get the car ready, Miserable day for them ultimately uh, at the end. No points and, and yeah, uh, not, not competitive at all. But if they were giving points away for effort, they, they probably would have won today. Yeah, firstly, quite enjoyed having both qualifying and the race on the same day. Just uh, got it all out of the way with. But um, no, I mean, qualifying was probably one of the best of the year. Uh, the race was probably one of the worst of the year. So yeah, mixed feelings. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, we know what the, the pace of the car is how it is, but there was a number of things that we didn't get right today and we needed to sort out. So um, yeah, hopefully when we go to Mexico, we can be on top of those things. Can you kind of elaborate on why the race wasn't so good? I know you said a number of things to sort out. I had a brake issue, which well, I've been struggling with a lot throughout the season with, uh, with the brakes have not been great, but they were especially poor today. Um, and then the pace, because I had no confidence, braking I mean almost into every corner you got to press the brake so if you can't attack the brakes and you can't attack the corner so as a result when the pace was very slow so when I managed to build up some confidence in the brake the pace came and I was you know lapping a good half a second to a second quicker than I was previously so it's um, it's incredible how such small things can have such large effects and that is pretty much that for this paddock pass uh, here at Suzuka Love racing here. Uh, it's such a phenomenal track, such a phenomenal place. Uh, the weekend, of course, hasn't been without incident. The weather that hit on Saturday and caused qualifying to be cancelled. Very, very fortunate that it didn't hit where we were uh, as, as savagely as we were expecting it to, but where it did hit land, uh, the typhoon uh, Hagibis did 
untold damage uh, and tragically took uh, many lives uh, as well. So our thoughts uh, are with the people of Japan at, at a, a very, very difficult time um, with the natural disaster uh, that occurred as it did. Uh, a huge effort from everybody uh, up and down this pit lane to keep everything bolted down, to, to, to batten down the hatches and to keep everybody safe um, and good decision ultimately as it turned out to not run on Saturday. Um, Mercedes, six time double world champions in Formula One, an astonishing feat. But as we've seen again and at every race since the summer break, Ferrari have turned the corner. The car is fast and when they get it all right and all together, they're difficult to beat. But Mercedes have made the most of these last two events deservedly six time in a row double formula one champions next up is the mexican grand prix in two weeks time we will see you there for now though from us that's your lot